This is part 3 of my talk about how to process Arenagram. In part 1 I gave an introduction and explained what Arenagram is. In part 2 I described the importance of background subtraction and how to recognize when it's been done correctly. Now in part 3 I'm going to show you some real examples three different renograms processed with different background regions to see which works best. So just a reminder of what we learned in part two. Background subtraction is judged to be correct when the renogram curve rises smoothly from zero. We may have to extrapolate to overcome incomplete mixing during the first minute uh, and this does assume that the bolus appears in the kidneys during the first frame of the study. If you're not sure about this, go back to part two and review what I said there. So my first example is from a patient using 50 megabacrels of technetium 99M labeled MAG3. This patient has good uptake in both kidneys and both kidneys have equal function. Uh, in this study, the activity appears in the kidneys in the first frame, so we no, have no problem about the delay. In this example, we can see the five-minute image showing I've drawn a region of interest in blue around the left kidney and in red around the right kidney, giving these renogram curves, which have been subtracted using a background region chosen below the left kidney. You can see that the function of both kidneys is equal, is 50% to each kidney, as shown by the fact that the curves rise equally quickly. So I'm going to ask several questions about these curves. When I do this talk to a live audience, um, it's nice to have some voting buttons so everyone can vote and we can see what the majority opinions are. In this context, if you're just viewing this on your own, then I suggest you also think about what answer you would have given if you'd had uh, a voting button so that you can think about the problem rather than just waiting for me to give the correct answer because the best learning experience is for you to think about these questions before I give the answer. So the question I want you to consider now is are these curves correctly subtracted? Do you think that they're correctly subtracted which means we've taken off the right amount of blood background? Do you think that they're under subtracted, which means we haven't taken off enough blood background, there is still some blood background left in the renogram curves, or maybe do you think we've over subtracted, we've taken off too much blood background? If you think you need a bit more time to consider that before you answer, just press the pause button and then continue when you're ready, because I'm going to give my answer now. I think these are under subtracted you can see that the background region that we chose has hardly any blood in that region and so both renogram curves still show some remaining vascular background. The curves don't start from zero, they start above zero indicating there's still blood in the, those curves. That means we've overestimated the uptake in both kidneys. Um, the relative function however may still be correct because we've overestimated both kidneys by equal amounts. So let's take a different background. This uh, is the same renogram but using a perirenal background, this C-shaped region around the left and right kidneys. Um, this allows us to apply a different background subtraction to each kidney if we want because they have two background regions rather than just one. You can see that the relative function has hardly changed, it's, to, it's still very close to 50-50. But what do you think about these curves? Are these correctly subtracted? you think they're correct or under subtracted which means we haven't taken off sufficient blood background or over subtracted which means we've taken off too much blood background. I'm going to give my answer now so if you want a bit more time to think press pause. I think there's still slight under subtraction. You can see that neither curve starts exactly from zero but they're not far off. So we've chosen a background region which has got a mixture of blood and tissue but there's still some remaining vascular background in the renogram curves but they don't quite start from zero. So although the uptake has been slightly overestimated because it's the same for both kidneys the relative function is probably still okay. Here I've taken a different background region above the kidney and applied this to 
both Renogram curves. The relative function still comes out at 50%, but what do you think about these curves? Are they correctly subtracted? Are they under subtracted? Or are they over subtracted? I'm going to give my answer now. I think that they're correctly subtracted. Both curves do start properly from zero, so the correct amount of blood background has been subtracted. So in this case we had a background region with quite a lot of blood in it. Above the kidney there there are vascular structures like the spleen and the aorta. So we have removed vascular background from both renogram curves, showing that there was blood in both renogram curves and this background region has got the right amount of blood to correspond to these kidneys. So the uptake is correct, which means the relative function is correct. So it was 50% to each kidney as we suspected right from the beginning. So the teaching point from this study is that technetium 99 m mag 3 has good kidney extraction efficiency. Therefore there's plenty of activities in the kidneys and not much in the background. So background subtraction was easy for this particular patient. So when we're using MAG3, and in a case like this with good kidney function, and both kidneys are normal, then using different background regions only makes a small difference to the result. It hardly affects the relative function, um, although a background under the kidneys may slightly overestimate the uptake, but it doesn't take off enough blood background. The perirenal background was pretty good, it did a mixture of blood and tissue, uh, but in this particular patient a background above the kidneys was best, although there was not really much to choose between them. So you may say what is he worrying about there, it really doesn't matter what you use, but here's another case which shows that it does matter. This study was done with technetium DTPA and the patient has a left kidney with poor function and a right kidney with good function. Uh, once again activity appears in the kidneys in the first frame so we don't need to worry about any delay. You can immediately see from the five minute image here that although the right kidney is well seen the left kidney is very hard to see on this early frame. Um, I had to use some of the later images in order to draw the blue region around where the left kidney is. But I've taken a background region underneath the left kidney um, and we get these renogram curves here. In this case the left kidney has only 13% of the patient's total renal function. But if we start by looking at the red curve for the right kidney, what do you think about that? Do you think that is correctly subtracted? Um, do you think that it's correct or under subtracted which means that we haven't taken off sufficient background, there's still blood background present or over subtracted which would mean we have taken off too much blood background. If you want more time to think press pause now because I'm going to show my answer. I think this is grossly under subtracted. There is a very rapid rise representing a vascular phase and the mixing uh, during this time so if we take the smooth part of the curve and extrapolate that as I shown by this red line I think it gives a positive um, intercept on the axis which means that the curve doesn't start from zero when we extrapolate. Um, so in this case the is still lots of blood background remaining in the right renogram curve because we've only subtracted a little bit of tissue and there's still a lot of blood background there. Remember this is DTPA which has less in the kidney and much more in the blood. So in this case we've certainly overestimated the uptake in the right kidney. But what about the left kidney, the blue curve for this patient? Do you think that's correctly subtracted or is it under subtracted or is it over subtracted? This one is probably harder, uh, you'll have to think about this one a bit more carefully. So if you need more time just press the pause button now. Okay, here's what I think. I think that if we see a kink very early on and then extrapolate that bit of the curve, this is the bit that we're extrapolating, so we end up with something which is still grossly under subtracted. There's still plenty of blood left there because it starts above zero. So we've overestimated the uptake in the left kidney as well as in the right kidney, but each one has a different amount of excess blood background, so the relative function may well be wrong um, because we've included different amounts of blood in each kidney. 
So let's try something else. Uh, last time we found um, a background uh, somewhere above and between the kidneys worked okay. Let's try something on this patient. This brown region uh, I've taken for background which has got some blood and some tissue over the aorta there. But let's have a look at the right kidney curve. Is that correctly subtracted? Or is it under subtracted? Or is it over subtracted? Remember there was a kink in this curve so we're going to have to extrapolate. So I think that if we extrapolate that bit of the curve it ends up starting above zero so there is still blood background present. We still have a vascular phase in this renogram. There's more blood in the background in this region than in the previous uh, one under the kidney so that's a better match to the right kidney but because there is still blood present the right kidney uptake is still overestimated. But what about the left kidney? Is that correctly subtracted? Or is it under subtracted which means there is still blood background present? Or is it over subtracted which means we've taken off too much blood background? Well my answer is that it is over, over subtracted now. It's taken off too much background, the curve has gone negative, although the computer has um, decided not to display the negative bit of the curve, but you can see that it obviously started off below the axis. So it's now over subtracted. So this particular background region has more blood than the left kidney, but less blood than the right kidney. So the left uptake was underestimated, and the right uptake was overestimated, so the rate of function must be wrong, 0% for the left kidney can't be right. Okay, let's try the perirenal background uh, that wasn't bad for the previous patient. Here we've got a C-shaped background around the left kidney and also one around the right kidney and the rate of function comes out at 3% this time. But if we have a look at the red curve for the right kidney, do you think that that is correctly subtracted? Or maybe it's under subtracted? Or maybe it's over subtracted? What do you think? Well, my answer is that if we extrapolate the smooth bit of the curve, we see that it ends up with a positive intercept. We have still got blood there, so it is under subtracted. What about the left kidney, though? Do you think that is correctly subtracted? Do you think it is under subtracted? Or do you think that it is over subtracted? Well, I think it's clear here that the answer is that it starts negative. It's over subtracted. We've taken off too much blood background and it's gone negative. So in this case, having individual background regions doesn't actually help. Although we recognize that the background needs to be different for left and right kidneys, the perirenal background still doesn't get it right. We've still uh, got the right uptake overestimated and the left uptake underestimated, so the relative function is still wrong. So it's not 3% either. Well, here is another background method. Um, here I've got two background regions, one below the kidney representing tissue and one above the kidney representing blood. And the Rutland plot method takes a mixture of those in order to do background subtraction. I'll explain more about this method in a moment. But first of all, let's have a look at the red curve for the right kidney. Is that correctly subtracted or is it under subtracted? or is it over subtracted? You may want to think about this for um, a bit longer. If so, press the pause button because I'm going to reveal my answer now. I think that if you extrapolate that smooth bit of the curve then it does start from zero. This wiggle at the beginning all occurs during the first 60 seconds and so we can disregard that as part of the mixing phase while the tracer is mixing in the kidney. Remember this is a study using DTPA where there remains a lot in the blood and not so much in the kidney. So in this case there was quite a lot of blood background in the right kidney but the Rutland method recognizes this and it does the correct background subtraction. So the right uptake is correct at least after the first minute after we've got through this mixing phase. So what about the left kidney for this patient? you think that that is correctly subtracted or is it under subtracted 
or is it over subtracted? Well, I think it's quite clear that this is now correct. It does start from zero. So the left kidney has much less blood background than the right kidney, but the Rutland method deals with that quite well, and it takes less blood background from the left kidney than it did from the right. So both uptakes are correct, and so relative function is correct. The answer of 12% for the left kidney is the best estimate of the relative function for this patient. Um, it's not the zero uh, percent or the three percent we had by some of the other methods it happens to be very close to the answer we got with the very first background region um, but that's more than by fluke than anything else we couldn't believe any of the others because the curves were under or over subtracted but here we have correct subtraction for both kidneys and so we can have confidence that the result is right so the teaching point from this patient um, is that because DTPA has low extraction efficiency, it gives a poor kidney to background ratio. And in this case, particularly where kidney function was poor, the background contribution was large, so different background regions can have a big effect. Particularly here, the function was asymmetric, then incorrect background subtraction affected the relative function measurement. So it was uh, clinically made a relevant difference to the relative function by getting different background regions. As it happens, the rate of function may be right even when the curves are under subtracted, but we can't be confident in the result. We only had some confidence when the curves all properly started from zero. And it's the Rutland method that gives correctly subtracted curves, so we have confidence in the result using that particular method. Okay, well that was a difficult example with DTPA and poor function. If you're lucky enough to use MAG3 rather than DTPA, maybe you don't need to worry about these fancy techniques. But here's another patient. This patient uh, used 50 megabacterials of technetium MAG3. The left kidney has good function. The right kidney is hydronephrotic. But once again, activity appears in the kidneys in the first frame. We don't need to worry about any delay. Here's the image at five minutes, and you can see a good function in the left kidney, and the right kidney is hydronephrotic. We just see a little outer rim of parenchyma, a functioning tissue, and a big dilated pelvis in the middle. We have to draw the region of interest around the whole of the kidney because we're interested in um, how the whole of that pelvis empties. But on the early images, we see there's actually not very many much functioning tissue. So in this case, I've done two background regions just for a bit of variety. Um, one under the left kidney applied to the left renogram and one under the right kidney applied to the right renogram. And the uh, function of left kidney comes out at 75%. But you think that that left kidney curve is correctly subtracted. Uh, maybe you think that the curve is correctly subtracted or maybe you think it's under subtracted or maybe you think it's over subtracted. I'm going to give my answer now and I think that it's under subtracted because there is still uh, a positive value for that curve when it starts uh, from the axis. It's starting well above the axis. There's still blood present at time zero. What about the right kidney? Do you think that is correctly subtracted or is it under subtracted or is it over subtracted? Well, once again, I think that that is under subtracted. We do a little bit of extrapolation and we see that actually there's still plenty of blood present at, at time zero. We haven't taken off enough blood. So we have here background regions underneath the kidney where there is hardly any blood in the background region. So both renogram curves still show remaining blood background. So, although we have allowed a different background for left and right kidney, we still haven't got it right. Both uptakes are overestimated, so the relative function may well be wrong. We can't have confidence in that result. So, let's take a background above the kidney. In this case, the relative function comes out at 84% for the left kidney, but is that left kidney curve correctly subtracted? Do you think it's correct subtraction or under subtraction? or over subtraction. Well, 
I think that it's it's correct. You may be arguing that you can just do a little bit there and say it's slightly negative, but I think that's pretty close. That's pretty close to correct subtraction. What about the right kidney? Is it correctly subtracted? Is it under subtracted? Or is it over subtracted? Well, I think if you extrapolate that curve, you see that it actually starts off below the axis. It's, it starts off negative. So ha actually, we've over subtracted the right kidney curve. So there's lots of blood in this background region, which was OK for the left kidney. We got correct subtraction for that. But for the right kidney, it is over subtracted um, because that right kidney and which is hydronephrotic, it's got some blood in the outer ring, rim of the parenchyma, but the big dilated pelvis is just full of urine with no blood in it. So it's got far less blood in the right kidney for its size. That's why we've over-subtracted the right kidney. That means that the relative function must be wrong because we've over-subtracted the right kidney. How about the perirenal background? That also allows different background for left and right kidney, so maybe this will get it right. That comes out at 85% for the left kidney, but is that curve correctly subtracted? Or is it under subtracted? Or is it over subtracted? Well, I'm pretty sure that the left kidney is now still correctly subtracted, so that's fine. But what about the right kidney? Is that correctly subtracted? Under subtracted? Or over subtracted? Once again, I think it's clear that the right kidney is over subtracted. So although we've got a mixture of blood and tissue in the background regions, and we've got a different mixture for left and right kidney, it still gets it OK for the left kidney, but not for the right kidney. The perirenal background the right, around the right kidney um, has lots of tissue and blood, but actually the kidney itself, with its hydronephrotic dilated pelvis, has very little blood background and so it's over subtracted the right kidney. So even this method gets the relative function wrong. How about the Rutland method that I mentioned for the last patient? Here I've got two background regions, a tissue one below the kidney and a blood one over the spleen above the kidney. The relative function now comes out at 81%. Is that left kidney curve correctly subtracted or is it under subtracted? Or is it over subtracted? Well, I think it's pretty clear that the left curve is correctly subtracted. So, what about the right kidney curve? Is it correctly subtracted? Is it under subtracted? Or is it over subtracted? Once again, I think that the right kidney curve is now correctly subtracted. So, we've got something that works for both kidneys in this patient. By having separate blood and tissue regions, the Rutland method is able to allow for a different mixture of blood and tissue for each kidney. So it takes off plenty of blood background for the left kidney, but much less for the right kidney, and gives these curves that start properly from zero. So the relative function should be correct. The correct answer is 81% for the left kidney in this patient. So the teaching point from this patient is that even with technetium labelled MAG3, in poorly functioning kidneys it can be difficult, particularly as in this case, when both kidneys have different amounts of blood, different vascularity. So the hydronephrotic kidney in this patient had very little blood for its size compared with the normal left kidney. The Rutland method overcomes this by automatically adjusting the amount of blood background to suit individual kidneys and it guarantees the correct result even in difficult cases. So that seems to be the method that works best. So in summary for this part what we've seen is that using Technetium MAG3 if the kidney function is good and both kidneys are normal the background contribution is small. So using different background regions only makes a very small difference to the result and it doesn't really matter which method you use. But if you're using Technetium DTPA or if the kidney function is poor, then the background contribution is large. So different background regions can have a big effect in these patients. The Rutland method is the most reliable one, even in these difficult patients. But even if you're using MAG3, 
poorly functioning kidneys can can be difficult, particularly like the case I showed when both kidneys have got different vascularity, like that hydronephrotic kidney. And in those cases, the Rutland method is also the most reliable one. So that's the end of part three. In part four, I'll discuss where to draw the various regions of interest.